know, as introduced, I'm Lewis Parks of SecureRF. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about what we do. In preparing this presentation, um, as I suspected, it's a bit of a broad-ranging crowd from some people who could give me some lessons in crypto to some people who are wondering, you know, what's the worry in checking their unsecured IoT watch and what have you. Um, so it's sort of hard. So what I thought I would do is, yes, answer the first question, is it safe? No. And instead of... Um, going into all the reasons why not, maybe have a quick discussion about what are the issues around trying to secure the Internet of Things, if one can do that, and perhaps some of the steps or directions both for people who are thinking about using the IoT, and everybody already is here, um, but people are developing products in the space. So just as a bit of an intro um, and, and, a, and a small clarification, so I am a founder of SecureRF, but if you've seen the movie uh, Beautiful Mind, uh, those are my partners, so I'm the human who interfaces between them and explains kind of what we do. Um, but we work with uh, a range of uh, high-performance crypto methods, including our own, which are the uh, first linear and time methods. And what we do is we put them in very, very small, low power or no power devices, um, secure NFC sensor tags, um, and platforms that get much, much smaller than this. Um, and specifically, and, and and why I'm here today is because those platforms are now all called part of the Internet of Things. And specifically, we're addressing anti-counterfeiting uh, package and products um, in a variety of high-value sectors, supply chain risk, and sensors. And related to this evening, I had them put on the slide that I guess about 10, 12 weeks ago in a Forbes article, we were named one of the 10 most influential companies uh, in the IoT, which was um, great. And thanks to everybody in my company who tweets. Um, so in order to talk about <laughs> IoT, if you want to know how you get that award. So if we're going to talk about what, what is the, you know, the Internet of Things, I thought we'd start with things. And, and I actually um, sit on a couple of standards committees uh, in security uh, and in other areas. In fact, I was just in London about four weeks ago at a, a security uh, IoT, specifically an IoT meeting where I sat for five hours while, while, they, tr while they tried to define the IoT. Um, so I thought this slide, which is literally fresh out, I don't know if it's out for public consumption. This is from an ISO standards group, 29161, which is auto identification and data capture is what the group does. And this is a very simple schematic of what a thing is. And uh, the center point, it's an entity, and we could say it's a digital entity. Um, they did a definition on the left-hand side. It says it's a person, an object, and a location. Anybody who works in um, different technologies, and, and by the way, I've flashed up NFC we work in RFID, we work in UHF, we work in 433, we'll have a BLE platform out later this year, Bluetooth, um, and we also do cores for uh, FPGAs and other things too. And I'll talk a little bit more about what we do further in the slides. Having said all that, this beautiful definition of what a thing is, um, animal tagging, livestock, anybody have a dog or cat tagged? I don't think they're a person, an object, or a location, and that seems to be the definition. So there's a lot of work to do. When we say things, we typically think of this. We think of thermostats and, and, and things that are going to track and monitor us, and courtesy of my marketing person, uh, Apple Watch in the bottom there. Um, you know, I like to think of all the best in fitness and stalker tools that are available today. Um, so what you probably don't think about is traffic light. Anybody think of a traffic light when I said IoT? So three, four weeks ago I tweeted out that 90 some odd percent of the traffic lights in the US have a Wi-Fi router in that little box beside them. And almost that same percentage don't have security. So for those of us old enough to have seen one of the Die Hard movies, I think it was the fourth one, where they shut down the city and what have you. Uh, life imitating art, art imitating life. Um, you can, for the most part, go in and do that in your town for fun and profit if you want. And that is the extent. So there's a lot of you know, validation points as to, as to what goes on and what doesn't go on in the Internet of Things. So the last thing is looking at things. What does the Internet look like? Um, and since we're in New York, I took something from First Mark Capital. I don't know if anybody's here. But you know, they did an attempt to show us the landscape of the Internet of Things. So I pull this up. We all know the Internet's big. We all know it's got a lot of places and what have you, and you think about it in terms of the IoT, this is what they said it looks like. Um, this is good, 
but you can tell the tip of the iceberg story because I don't see anything in Chinese on here and I think the Chinese know about the internet and the internet of things. Um, I was just in Washington with a group from Germany and they got a big IoT thing going. So this is a great representation but obviously this is a very very big thing to secure. So the internet um, you know and the network you bring things in the internet together and what do you get? I thought this cartoon was a good representation. I think my Nest smoke alarm is going off. Google AdWords just pitched me a fire extinguisher and an offer for temporary housing. <laughs> Isn't it a perfect world? Um, so I used this once before, I don't know how long ago, and then I smiled and I said, I'm going to put it in tonight. And I know there's technology people here and I'm not going to, I took out a lot of the sort of crypto stuff that sometimes we do in these presentations, although I'm happy in the Q&A to, to the extent I can answer, answer. But I think the interesting thing, then the heads up is, um, hey, there was a firmware update to this device. Why? Because it was discovered that they could improve it. Apparently there's an issue telling smoke from steam or water vapor um, in a lot of smoke detectors. So the good news is they announced they've got a more, better, improved product. And how did they do it? From data collected from hundreds of thousands of households. Okay, so did everybody recognize it? the motion, the room they're in, and everything else is happening? So you now have a new and improved product, but yes, if you read the stuff, all that data goes to the cloud. It's a big company, they don't share with any third parties, and, and one of them is on my board, so I like them dearly. Um, but you know, if you decide to get rid of that device, please be aware your data does not come out of the cloud, does not come out of the database, et cetera. So a lot of issues in terms of securing these things. So let's talk a little bit about what it's gonna take to make this stuff safe and maybe deter some of the hackers. Um, and why do we wanna do it? And I just put this number up. Originally I was gonna speak for seven minutes. I think I'm gonna speak for eight now. This is a number of net new devices that would join the IoT during my talk. 4,773 phones, tablets, sensors, devices, platforms a minute every minute of every day that's the growth we've all seen these other charts 20 gazillion 400 kabillion whatever but it's an interesting number because if you're thinking about doing something in the IOT you got a big market so what does it take to secure a network uh, I would suggest it takes more than a lot of us have come up with so far today Securing a network is a very difficult thing. You have to be protected at every point, and I suggest it's not possible. Um, there's always seems to be something new and another way around. And by the way, when I talk about these network things, and I'm gonna throw some aspersions on almost all of them, um, in combination, you can't not do something. It's a layered thing, and there are people here who will tell you later from the security group that you gotta layer, you gotta do all sorts of things to get any sense of security. So I would suggest securing a network is very very difficult. So what I'd like to talk about for the last few minutes is just device level security or securing things. Um, and that's what we do. So the unique thing that we do is we do asymmetric or public key cryptography, which you use every day on Amazon and your banking and what have you, except we're putting it on one megahertz, 10,000 gate equivalents, five microamp platforms and running it in sub millisecond timing. So that's the unique thing that we do, and I'll mention that. But the world of security breaks out into two hemispheres, and again, uh, not to bore some of the group that's here, symmetric or private key, we all use it. I have a shared secret. Gentleman in the front row has a shared secret. Number three, I move it to the right. Three, he moves it to the left. It worked, nobody knows. Um, and that's, everybody has a Wi-Fi network, or what have you, um, is using symmetric security. Asymmetric or public key, and by the way, symmetric, 4,000 years old, Caesar sent his orders to the battlefield, symmetrically encrypted. Um, asymmetric or public key, 1974-5, depending on whose book you want to believe, Diffie-Hellman, RSNA, a guy in England, but mid-70s, 40 years old. And just for the purpose of today's discussion, what's interesting about it is um, I have a public and private key that are mathematically connected, and so does somebody else when I meet them, and depending which method, we either exchange our public keys and can produce a mutual shared secret, or we can use it to authenticate or secure ourselves. And we can talk later, but I didn't want to drill down into security. At a very high level, that's asymmetric. 40 years old, great stuff. But there's a couple of issues with each. So the first issue is symmetric, key management, the key management problem. So there's a key on your network, there's a key on your laptop. If there's 500 other people with that key in your law firm and somebody loses their laptop, guess what? You all better change your key. Uh, so you have to keep that database secure. 
and any breach in the system is a breach to the entire network. Not a big deal in a 100 person Wi-Fi network maybe. Uh, when we talk about the billions and billions served in the IoT, kind of hard to do a recall. Um, and in fact, just to drive it home and somebody here asked what proof or what do you have? So I said, oh great, I put that slide in. Um, 505 databases last week breached. Um, and I guess for effect, it's Home Depot, New Canada, Home Depot, no, no, Home Depot. Yeah, Home Depot had a bad week. Um, I'm not going, I go to Lowe's. Anyways, it's a cheap pitch for Lowe's. So there's a problem with Symmetric. Symmetric is typically what you hear about, AES, DES, triple DES, on and on it goes. Um, you know, a lot of the hash functions, all these things which rely on Symmetric platforms, you can use them, but they're of limited use in the IoT. So, and why it happens when you look at asymmetric or public key? So there's a problem, and the problem is that the computational Weight. In other words, the number of things you need to compute to get a shared secret um, or an authentication or what have you in a public key world frankly outstrips the computing platforms, even the battery powered supercomputer stuff that looks like your smartphone. So when you get down to platforms, and we actually work on platforms that are roughly 50% to 60% smaller than this, the entire computing platform and everything it does, um, you just don't have the luxury of, of you know, the seven or eight years it took RSA until a PC caught up in the mid 80s that they could actually become a commercially viable company. So. Why is that? And, and there's one inversion on this chart, so I apologize, but I will explain it mathematically correctly. And that is because all the security we use today runs in quadratic time. Symmetric or asymmetric? And what does that simply mean? It simply means we multiply and divide large numbers to come up with the security. And we all know that when you go down to the gate level on a chip, you're not multiplying and dividing. Three times six is actually three, six times in a buffer added up. And dividing is a lot of additions and subtractions. Um, so, and that's a throw out to the next guys are talking from Columbia because my guys are in the math department, they're in the other department. So the problem is, is that when you say, oh, the, we're getting better at breaking things, so use a bigger key to make it secure. Well, that can work on a two gigahertz platform, plugged in, all the power in the world and what have you. But if I'm back on that single chip running at one megahertz, five microamps, four or 5,000 gate equivalents to do my computation, I can't make the key bigger necessarily. And that again is the world we operate in and that is, that is the barrier when you say, well, let's just put that security on. It's working on Amazon, it's working on eBay. Let's just put it on that Apple Watch and make it not the stalker item it could be. Um, so these are the challenges. The threshold of these products are typically above most of the IoT computing thresholds. Yes, they will secure your tablet and some smartphones, et cetera. But you know what, they run down the battery. So even where you could run them at a reasonable time that you would use them, they're not deployed. And as we all know, it's likely human behavior in many things, like a bad random number generator implementation or just not even turning it on in the case of a traffic light that makes us exposed. So just summing up, the short answer, as I said at the beginning, is no, we're not safe. Um, you know, it is a secure security challenge to deal with all these small things. One thing I want to point out, a lot of the stuff we deal with, it doesn't have an OS. You know, it's, it, it would be a luxury to say, great, you know, I'm going to do this thing in firmware, or I'm going to load this software, and we do do some of that, but that's like a luxurious place that some things get to live. A lot of these little devices, there is no OS to run on. You, you are truly on your own. So um, I would suggest that in addition to network stuff that some people say, there, you're done, we're good. Um, and by the way, we were visited two months ago by one of our partners in the defense industry who mentioned to us that they were playing around. This is a big company. I don't think anybody plays around. And they're able to shut down a car, which is another IoT device, right? Big software platform. They're able to shut down a car in motion via a software attack. And they were just playing with it to think maybe they should market it to police departments and what have you. So again, what can you do with security? A lot of different platforms we haven't thought about out there. I think Symmetric will work in a limited deployment. You got a small platform, a small network, a small environment, you can use it. There is asymmetric or public key stuff coming. 
I sit on one of those committees. We have our, our stuff in at one of the groups and you should monitor them because there are two or three other symmetric uh, or asymmetric platforms that I believe will emerge successfully out of the 15 to 20 that are currently proposed. Um, and I guess the last thing, and this would be a great crowd for this, don't expect that the traditional winners, RSA, ECC, Diffie-Hellman, AES, are going to be the things you're going to see securing. So you should have a, uh, an open mind because there is stuff coming. And until then, I would just suggest caution in creating, using, or moving your data around the Internet of Things. Thank you.